What's going on guys? Big to be back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be going full force, full in-depth detail on the Bivik 55-inch dedicated shooter cabinet known as... Time Crisis. Dude. <laughs> this is how light gun games should be played on a big ass screen. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> Alright guys, you know Joe Fanfile Man, all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at, I'll put up there, at Vic underscore VP. Everything. Instagram, TikTok is blowing up. I posted a video today that I shot last night at 2.30 in the morning that went from Instagram to TikTok, blew up. 3,000 views within about, I would say, 30 minutes. Tis the season with some House of the Bread. Doesn't like House of the Dead gingerbread, man. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me on all the socials. You would have seen everything. You always see everything. Now in this video, we're gonna be doing the full in-depth, full detail view, review of this build. I'll take you in on the back. We'll close the lights. I didn't do that in the overview video. This thing is glowing. What a cabinet. Unbelievable. Now keep in mind, again, this is the 55 inch. This is a 55 inch QLED, not OLED, QLED TV on this dedicated shooter. No DJ hero, no guitar hero, no uh, karaoke, uh, and what else am I missing? And no DDR. Did I say that? No DDR on this. This is a dedicated shooter. Keep in mind, I do have my personal Bivik 55 inch, the House of Rock. That cabinet is everything. So that's guitar hero, DDR. Um, what am I missing? Guitar Hero, DJ Hero, and the karaoke all in one. Not to mention it's got a monster sound system with a, I think it's like a 12 inch subwoofer that I have on it. I do have that version. This customer though only wanted a dedicated shooter. You want, I will deliver. That basically made me go in to my CNC programming and make a whole new complete cabinet from scratch. Man, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. When I was designing it and all that, there was so many things that I was thinking about. I originally took my Bivik design, which really in the rear, it's kind of um, the, the panel that's holding like the TV. It's actually much smaller on my Bivik design. I had to keep a lot of things in mind. This is where now like a builder like myself, this is like the stuff that I think of before I even start cutting wood. If I would have kept the original Bivik, you know, rear, there, I mean, I didn't build it, but in my mind, I'm like, there's a chance that this could tip. So a lot of like weight and all that, there's a lot of things that go through my mind. Not to mention I'm thinking about like the angle of the gun panel. I didn't want it too down. I didn't want it too up. So many things going on in my mind. Again, Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. I build custom arcades. That is what I love. And I everybody's going crazy. I mean, I can't say everybody, but a lot of the viewers, a lot of people that see the cabinet, they do like the buy Vic design. I'm just a big believer. Bigger is better. Who doesn't want to shoot zombies, bad guys, on a 55 inch screen? People over there, you got RK1 up with their time crisis with the, I don't know, the 17 inch bullshit. Why? You need a monster screen. Also, a lot of stuff going into my mind when I was building the placement of the TV. This right here is height. Such as, for example, like, you know, if you're going to shoot a guy, you know, you're like right there, like bang. <laughs> Again, I'm just so excited. There's so much I want to talk about, but I am a little bit on a time constraint because I have got to wrap this thing today and deliver it. We're going two hours out to deliver it. This customer does have a Christmas party today. He didn't, what's the wording? Um, he didn't demand it on this day. He just said, hey, big man, if you got it done, it would be great to have for my Christmas party. I said, I will let you know. I got the guns in yesterday at 11 a.m. From 11 a.m. up to 2.30 a.m., I've been on this cabinet testing games. That is what I do. I like to test. So much stuff. Again, I'll, we're going to go full in depth. I'm already rambling. Uh, <laughs> where should we start? Where should we start? Let's talk about the PC and basically hyperspin in general. 
I can't lie, there's a lot going on in the shop. I got gaming solutions, yes, I have some panels and um, two player pedestals going on. There's not much room, not to mention behind this cabinet, you can still see I have the ultimate arcade, I have a V-pin. There's a lot going on, but tis the season. Uh, I, I love this, this season. Usually from Black Friday up to Christmas, that is like, I get a lot of inquiries. Um, and unfortunately, I cannot do all of the Christmas builds. You'll stay tuned for all that. But this one here, I started on Black Friday. Like, I had the cabinet on its feet. It took me about a day or two to make the cabinet on its feet, just the wood alone. And then Black Friday hit. I said, I'm going to go get a PC for this build. I got a great deal on it. And then everything now followed through. But yes, I feel you know, it, I feel it's like an awkward camera placement. I just want to show off the blue side on this. But man, the PC on this again, custom PC. We got an i5, 32 gigs of RAM. I didn't do 16 gigs. I got a good deal on 32 gigs, so why not? 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte M.2 SSD. And as far as the graphics card on it, this is running a RTX 4060. Somebody already wrote on TikTok like, 4060, that is overkill. Listen, it's current gen and it's like the best deal. Why would I go out and get a 1050 Ti if I could get a 4060? So my job, again, when it comes to like numbers and all that, my job is to get the best that I could get for what you're paying for. I don't skimp out on stuff. For the amount of money that this cabinet was sold for, there's no way I'm going to put a Dell Optiplex in this. This is custom PC specs, pricing and such. As far as the drive on this, this is my personal hyperspin based system. Clocked in yesterday, the official number. 253 light gun games plus 28 Wii games. My Wii games do not need the nunchuck. I know there's like 120 Wii games and oh, you're missing game. No, a lot of those games need a nunchuck. The games I have on this do not require a nunchuck. That's stupid. Don't believe the hype when people post, I got 300, 500 like on games. There's a lot. Basically though, my 253, it's quite a jump from my other builds. Uh, a lot of indie games came out, but I don't download and install all indie games. It's kind of funny, there's a couple of groups out and they post these links and they're putting games that aren't even like on games. Like somebody posted like a tank, like you're a tank and you go left and right. So now you need two arrow keys and then you're shooting a missile. That's not a light gun game. Like, don't stop it. Don't do that. I only have one game that's on this called like Exodus, but it's kind of cool. At least like the ship follows the gun. Not like I have to focus on like arrow keys on my, no, just stop it. Uh, again, some of the indie games you do, it's not like a one button exit because you need to like hit escape to go back to the main menu. A couple of things, but basically, like I said before, I showed you before like the house of the bread, uh, the gingerbread game. Very cool. It's House of the Dead. Why not? Very simple stuff. Uh, again, you got your MAME, you got your Sega Model 2, Sega Model 3, you got your Techno Parrot, and then you got your PC games and such, PS1, PS2, PS3, Namco 357, so this does have the Dead Escape, you do have Sailor Zombie, and you have the Dead Storm Pirate. PS3, Time Crisis Raising Storm on this. Beautiful, that 4060 powers through with the 32 gigs of RAM. Again, yesterday, I mean, I might look tired, I might have bag on my eye, but uh, testing was intense yesterday. Um, I'll do a couple of games and such, I don't want to bore you guys too much, but right now, because I mentioned Time Crisis Raising Storm, might as well launch Time Crisis Raising Storm. Again, a PS3 game it just chugs through beautiful as you can see loading and such hyper spin configured correctly and such gotta wait for it to go full screen boom you're in the game please wait i got my amp here man i'll skip the cutscene again you got your 24 volt real time crisis arcade guns from ray arcade electronics Listen to that clap. Listen to it. So we go. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. What a thing of beauty. Exit out, brings you back to the main menu. You can pick a different game. Test it. Man. You got the PC specs down again, mentioning about the guns now. Ray, RPEG Electronics, one of the three Amigos. Man, these Time Crisis guns. I have experienced these guns before with my under cabinet build that I did with, in collaboration with Joel, Retro Lizard, and Ray, RPEG Electronics. These guns are no joke. It's unbelievable. Listen, just the weight, the weight alone on these guns is unreal. I have my aim tracks, but when you put this in your hand, you're like, whoa, is this like a real gun? <laughs> this thing's got some weight to it. Shout out to Ray, always, always improving. I get this much luck. Vic, why don't you modify the guns? Why don't, no, I have Ray. <laughs> I'd rather just pay Ray because this is his specialty. Look at that. The beautiful two buttons on the gun with the LED. Awesome. He's always improving. Look at the actual USB cable. This is insane. Oh, Vic, it's just a USB cable. No, this is thick. This is awesome and clean and obviously clean as clean can be. In the front, you got your USB connection and you got the 24 volt power input on that. Awesome. Now, jumping real quick to the LEDs. Gun for IR LEDs. A gun for IR number one, you, you can't beat. You just can't beat it. The technology is there. Nothing can compare. No, I'm not sugarcoating this. No, not because I know Ray, I'm gonna uh, sponsor gun. Gun for IR is where it's at. I only offer two options. Aim track, which is your cheapest option, or gun for IR. Please, it's, there's a lot of guns coming out on the market. I don't do Simmon. I will not be touching Retro Shooter. Uh, there's something else coming out. Uh, something with blowback. What the f bl I'm over here laughing at myself. I'm like, oh, I always say sliding recoil. Somebody came up with the term of blowback. Okay, no, I only do these two guns. That is it. You just can't beat it. I'm sorry, again, it's not because Ray is my friend and I'm kind of support my friend. It's just known facts. The LEDs, he also upgraded like the wiring to the LEDs. The actual boards here now have like a two pin connector. Mind blowing stuff, Vic, you're exaggerating wire. No, wiring on this is insane. Not to mention again, 55 inch screen. His LEDs, the wire on the LEDs, I think you could put it on like an 80 inch. There's so much slack and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing that he gives you slack. His other renditions, he used to have two wires that were shorter and two wires that were longer than one another because the two wires went to the sides and then the shorter wires went up and down. Now he just made it simple. It's all four wires are the same. Genius, genius. I cannot get enough of these guns. Vic, why don't you have a pair? I've said it many times in my videos. I wish I played my cabinets more. <laughs> my gun cabinet, it gets turned on when there's a new game coming out and uh, parties. So if you're talking regular party mode, it's like four or five times a year. I just personally, I can't, I'm not gonna buy or spend that much on something that I, I'm not gonna say we're barely, I rarely play. If it was pinball, that's a different thing. I play that every day. <laughs> now, I'm gonna state, I'm gonna address the number one thing. Vic, you made a time crisis cabinet. Where is the pedal? <laughs> I understand, please, I understand. Yes, you have the option to add the pedal. Okay. In this situation, two things happen. Number one, the customer could, he didn't want to spend the money on it. Pedals, again, I definitely would get from Ray RP Electronics. He's got the metal ones. Beautiful. They're the ones that will not like slide and stuff. And he's got also like the LEDs. It's beautiful stuff, but it comes with a price. So number one, customer didn't want to spend it. He spent money on this. And then, you know, I, I always feel bad. You know, I tell the customer, here's the deal. Here's what we could do. And then like add-ons is like if you want like a pedal, then like, you know, really it starts out with the guns. I tell them, listen, there's two options. I can give you the cheapest build possible, but you're gonna get a cheap light gun, which is the aim track. Or balls out, go crazy, get the real stuff, get the true weighted stuff. Normally I, I suggested the jolt, but now this is the new suggestion because from Ray, the jolts are kind of, I don't want to say that we're getting extinct or they're difficult to find, but Ray, it, think of it as this. This and the jolt are the same price. Which one would you do? 
I would jump to this. So, yes, when I mention the stuff about the guns, that's usually how pricing goes with me. I tell you, listen, you wanna go cheap? Or you wanna go balls out and hardcore? I always do say it depends on how much you're gonna play this. You're gonna play this every day? Spend the money. If you're like me, and it's kind of like, hey, when family comes over, I'll play it, you could go, I don't wanna say the word cheap, but you could go on a lower budget based system. So, when I mention the guns, then I mention the pedals, and the customer's like, whoa, do I really need the pedal? Not really, because the buttons on the gun is mapped to the pedal. I understand, yes, real-time crisis feel is pedal. I understand that, but again, the customer didn't want it. Number two, and in the heat of the moment, Ray didn't have pedals. Now he does have a pedal, but the best thing is, if the customer wants it, he could just buy it, and then it's a simple add-on. Like a team viewer in and just address it and call it a day. So he didn't lose out. Oh, you could always upgrade these things. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Now real quick, just to show off the PC real quick, I'm gonna actually exit Hyperspin. Of course, the by Vic Design, look at that custom background. This is really meant for when it boots. I always have my arcade button to power down and shut down the computer. I just wanna show off basically time of boot and such on this. Um, man, keep in mind though again, when it comes to like this stuff, Hyperspin launching, I always have it set to launch after 30 seconds, seconds, seconds. 30 seconds of log on. So I'm gonna hit the button, three, two, one. As you can see, LEDs turn on. I have the LEDs here and the fans in the rear wired to the actual PC. Uh, usually like these, I, I used to do it connected to the actual like LED strip. Now I kind of changed it. Now I have it connected to the actual computer. And as you can see, we are booted. Awesome, speed. Awesome. Yes, you could see power spec. Yes, this is a micro center pre-built. I always take those pre-built and I upgrade them. The RAM and the uh, hard drives, like the SSDs that they have, are crap. So this does now have a Samsung M.2 SSD, and this does have like the Vengeance 32 gigs of RAM. Again, right now the PC is booted. I always have it specifically set though. After 30 seconds, Hyperspin will launch. Just take a look at the custom background on this. Set your sights on time crisis and boom, you are booted, you can enter in, and away you go. 30 seconds, 35, 40, 40 seconds tops, and you're in and playing. Now on this, I did something that I've never done before and I always complain about it, but Joel, he is right on this. As far as the encoder, I, I am running an iPad. Yes. I know. <laughs> I am running an iPad on this, mainly because of that dedicated escape. That really helps out, especially in Techno Parrot games. I will not use this though for Arcade 6. If I ever needed to do the dedicated escape, Ray told me and Joel a great encoder that we could get, that you could basically buy it and then just have it mapped out to escape. But man, awesome stuff. As far as hyperspin on this, this is my image. You're not gonna find this image anywhere. I'm big on either themes, as you can see here, or full screen videos. That's usually what I like. I did a couple, uh, a couple of videos I didn't have, or they were kind of low res, so I kind of re-recorded. Logos I cleaned up. Basically, as you can see, like I have two versions of Point Blank 2. Not many duplicates, but this is like the arcade version. This is why I updated MAME. I'm gonna talk about MAME upgrade. And then I have also the PS1 version, because it's kind of technically two different games. But yes, it is all there. No, I don't have 100 duplicates. I don't do that. Just a couple, basically if there's a MAME version and then a PS1 version or a PS2. For example, Time Crisis 2, I have the MAME version and I have the PS2 version. Now, I wanna talk real quick about MAME. It's so funny, the one thing I kind of regret when I first started doing all this is that my first videos were like, I would say MAM, MAM Arcades, and everybody's like, what the hell's MAM? And if you ask me what I have a regret in life, it's that. <laughs> but MAME, MAME I had to do an update uh, because they launched Point Blank 2. And basically my old MAME was, was old and stuff, but when I tell you no joke yesterday, uh, you're talking at least about, I would say three hours. I sat and I launched every single MAME game on my build. Big thing is that when MAME gets updated, ROMs don't work if you have old ROMs. Now you gotta get new ROMs and stuff, it's a huge headache. So, MAME had to get updated, I always do my thing where it's kind of full screen and such, and all that. But the one thing that I was having a hard time with, and I kinda am happy that I launched each game, number one, I'm happy I launched each game because again, some ROMs didn't work and I had to update the ROM. 
So that's the big thing. Like, you know, anytime I do an update like that, I have to make sure everything works. MAME is an emulator. Yes, you're looking at like 80 MAME games. And yes, I launched 80 games. MAME, um, what am I getting at? The next level, the next step up, for some reason, my MAME, the volume was low. So I had to launch each MAME game and then adjust the volume in the sliders option. Why? I don't know. I don't want it where like customers are going to raise this. You know, if MAME is low, that means you're putting this up 100%, let's say. But then when you get to the menu, it's like blaring, like bleh. No, I don't like that. So I did that. Number two, biggest thing is off-screen reload. <laughs> I never had that problem before, but there's about like eight or nine games that you have to actually make a custom INI file to enable off-screen reload. Again, my biggest thing when it comes to MAME, I do like using the buttons here for coin and start. When you enable off-screen reload, it knocks out your mouse button too. It's no longer readable in main. What does that mean? I always have it set to mouse button two for the coin. It's just no longer readable. It's like basically the eight or nine games, I have only those games set to off-screen reload. Games such as Area 51, Area 51 uh, Max, um, Maximum Force, um, one more because I don't want to spoil it because I'd rather you go and test your games. Uh, Lethal Enforcers. Those are games that like, you have to, like, I, I had to play it, start it, and I'm like, oh shit, I can't reload. Then I have to do the whole off-screen reload thing. It, there's a lot to it. In my eyes, I am current, up-to-date, every kind of Lycan game that is out there, I basically have it here. You have the House of the Dead remake. Uh, the most recent ones that came out is like Night Hunter and like Castlevania. Um, you know, it's not, Castlevania is not even, a, it is a light gun game and it's kind of not and all that. You're kind of slashing and stuff. Another one that I added, which is pretty popular, people ask me about Carnival King. That was added too, luckily with the, the new MAME. And as you can see again, Castlevania the Arcade. So, I mean, again, right now I feel like I'm up to date. If there's any new games, you know, customers could hit me up and uh, I'll try to figure out something. But everything basically launches clean same thing when it comes to like the loading screen custom loading screen as always i always do that with a build i just i can't get enough of it man it is a thing of beauty now again the screen you're looking at a 55 inch q led i also got this tv on sale for black friday why not everything is set to 4k some of the other games go to like 1080p as you can see like castlevania but majority of the games are all set to 4k now the one last thing i'll mention it was i did want to do this as a little gift to the customer um, I actually purchased Joel Retro Lizard's gun drive. And the little gift I wanted to do was that basically the customer would have best of both worlds, hyperspin and launch box. So I did, again, this isn't an idea that I pitched to Joel and I didn't get his drive for free. I paid for the drive like anybody else would. Um, it was just something I wanted to do, you know, maybe start offering it. Hey, if you want the hyperspin, I have hyperspin. If you want launch box, we could basically put best of both worlds in one build. So. Uh, the drive is on its way here, but I got to get this thing wrapped and delivered today. So I'll probably use it for the next build. Uh, so yes, it wasn't a collab, but I did mention to Joe, like, hey, do you want, you know, I'm going to buy your drive. I just want to let you know, I'm going to put it on this PC. He goes, Vic, man, you're the man. Let's do it. You know, it's just unfortunate that uh, it just didn't come in time. That's not his fault. That's kind of my fault. I ordered it too late, um, but everything else a-okay. At least the customer has my hyperspin. <laughs> One last thing that I mentioned about Launchbox, uh, again, the New Year's coming up, I was going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to say was, I'm going to dabble into Launchbox. My biggest thing when it comes to hyperspin is like after like, I would say it's like five hours, you kind of get like the white exclamation point. It's basically a memory, memory leak. Uh, but Ray told me that that also happens with Launchbox. So now I'm like, oh, that was like the one real reason why I wanted to go to Launchbox was to kind of, you know, the front end. There is something called like hyper refresh, which my buddy Project Canada has. And he just told me the breaking news that hyper refresh will actually refresh while you're in game. And I'm like, that's not good. So he's actually had a couple instances where he was playing like a, an arcade game with high scores. And then it kind of got wiped because hyper spin refresh. I normally do not send these out with hyper refresh enabled or on. That's something like we kind of add on later on. Ever since Project Canada told me that, I'm like, ooh, I think I'm gonna avoid hyper refresh. That's my only downside to hyperspin was the exclamation point. Notice how I say was. Now that I find out the launch box has the same exclamation point issue, it's no longer a hyperspin issue. Let's do a quick overview of the customer himself, and then we're gonna dabble into the artwork on this. So 
Customer, I'm actually delivering this out. It's two hours away. He is in Connecticut, so I'll take the drive. That's a okay, no worries. Um, customer, he bought a game. He bought from me a Game Room Solutions build, 32 inch. I would say it's about a year ago. I didn't film that build because I actually built it in his house. This right now has to go downstairs. I would say about 15 to 16 steps. It was a not a narrow stairway. It's like your normal legal stairway, but it couldn't fit a 32 inch arcade cabinet. Not to mention, Game Room Solutions cabinets are big, they're tanks. They're heavy because of that MDF. This right here with the laminated burst that I made, I have no fear. We could definitely get this in one piece. I have this set up in one piece. Worst case though, if I have to disassemble it, I have all the stuff, I have everything prepared for me to disassemble it. I don't think we have to go. This right now, it's at 24 to 23 inches deep. So my idea is that when I get to his house, we're gonna go sideways. Basically, I'll hold the bottom. I, right now, when I lay the vinyl, I lift this thing up on my own on a table. It's not that heavy. That's the beauty of laminated birch that I use. It is a thing of beauty. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just clean. It's much durable, much heavier duty. This thing is on wheels, so if he has to move it, he can move it and such. I don't like to move it when the PC is powered on. I don't want, I have like a bullshit like extension cord and I don't want it to kind of just unplug. You don't want to do that. Uh, but now let's go into the artwork on this, man. Posted a TikTok today, blew up, blew up. Not to exaggerate, not to, tell, you know, not to showboat, it blew up. And one of the comments the guy wrote there, he goes, hey, I just saw this artwork on uh, the Lunatics group. And I was like, I actually commented on that picture because it's my artwork, not in a bad way. I'm like, oh, I just wrote there like, oh, I like that artwork, good choice in the artwork. And then showed up like everybody that, you know, they see it, they're like, oh, that's Vic VP's artwork and stuff. And then my buddy Eric even like, I'll, sh I'll real quick, I'll just show you like the TikTok that I make. Again, as you could see, artwork totally done by me. And again, if you guys know my history of Game Room Solutions, how they took my other artwork, and I'm not gonna discuss it too much. But basically, if you do have this option, if you find this option of Time Crisis on their site, just know that it was my design. Now, Vic, not everybody knows you, Vic. I know. Remember, I learned my lesson the first time. If you look very carefully on the left, the right, even down the middle, you will distinctly, or I should say, you would faintly see my logos, such as Game Case Arcades, and Vic VP. So again, I do it in a way that you really can't see it. That again is just because, you know, Game of Solutions screwed me over. They took my artwork. And again, I'm not going to go too far into it. I made a video of it about a year ago. But left and right, you can see it here. Game Case Arcades and Vic VP. Again, you can't see it unless you really look at it. Now that I mentioned it, you could definitely see it. Um, but yes, I learned my lesson the last time. I put it almost everywhere on the kick plate and on the button plate here so if you look very carefully here you do have vig vp here i don't have a game case oh here it is i was like i can't even see it right now but there's a game case arcades here same thing on the kick plate here vig vp is at the bottom left right there and game case arcades again so faint you can't even see it from far away unless you're really looking at it um again i told the customer i was going to do that he said vic no problem, I understand. So again, if Game Room Solutions tries to play this off as their artwork, you could just kind of closely look at it. Unless they do what they did with the Street Fighter and they put the black tape over my names and all that. So again, basic info on the cabinet itself. So real quick, this is posted on like on Lunatics. Check this out, now that I look closer. So left side here, you could see right by the knee, his foot, you can see the Vic VP logo, even by his shoulder. You can see the Game Case Arcades logo, the kick plate in the front, bottom left, you can see next to Time Crisis 4, the Vic VP logo. But now take a look at what I just noticed. The button panel, if you watch my video, look at that, they put a Time Crisis logo where the blue gun is. That is hiding my Vic VP logo. <laughs> oh, Game Room Solutions. Again, don't get me wrong, I've always used Game Room Solutions in the past. Now I build my own cabinets, but you can see people saying, Hey Vic, this looks kind of familiar. I did comment on it. I'm not hating on it. This one's great from my boy Eric. There it is, <laughs> the logo there. Uh, but I'm just happy to see that other people are at least enjoying the artwork. I just wish, you know, Game Room Solutions gave credit where credit is due. But then I'm going to get the, Vic, this isn't your artwork. 
This isn't your artwork. It's not your artwork. Anyway. Now, yes, as you can see, I learned my lesson the first time. Not many people know about the Street Fighter story. You have to go back on my videos. That means you're not, you're, you might be new. That's okay. Go back on my YouTube videos. You'll see me unboxing a control panel. I discovered it's my Street Fighter artwork. That Time Crisis cabinet that I built, this was before I was making my own cabinets, okay? I am very proud of the artwork that I made on that. So proud that there are people that are getting the artwork. I love it. I don't hate on it. I'm not, I don't, what's the word? I'm not upset about it. I, I'm happy. I'm very happy that people like the artwork so much that they like it. Now, I do, I don't want to say an army. I have a couple of, you know, viewers and subscribers that, you know, people will post their cabinet and then they'll write like, hey, that's Vic VP's artwork. And then people, like, I guess the people that buy the cabinet, they get upset. They're like, okay, you know, whatever, fine, shut up. Like, it's Vic's, okay, fine. I, <laughs> the hardest thing is that I'm not asking people to do that. People just do it on their own. And that's a-okay, I just want to make that clear. I'm not asking, I'm not like typing to people like, hey, go message it. I don't do that, it's fucking stupid. But there are people that will just go out and they write it. I had one dude that was just really pissed that like people were mentioning that it's Vic VP's artwork. And the guy's like, okay, we get it, I get it. And he actually DM'd me. And he's like, stop having your people comment on all the pictures that it's your artwork. And I'm like, I'm not making anybody do that. It's just, I'm not telling people, I'm not paying people to do that. People just do that on their own. But you know, the words I said, my only gripe is if they claim it to be their artwork. Now you get the whole, this is Namco's artwork. It's not your artwork. <laughs> That's exactly how you sound, okay? I get it, it's not my artwork, it isn't, I get it, but it is my design. That's what you could say. Oh, no, your design. You get what I'm saying, that's the big thing. Anyway, this, the best thing about this is that this right here is printed. It is the correct colors that it was intended to be. This laminated gloss, again, Justin, Gulf Coast decals. I supply the artwork, he prints. That is all that he does, man. He always knocks it out of the park. He is awesome. The best part when I unrolled it, this was the red that it was supposed to be. That is the best. This is the blue that it was supposed to be. That gloss, it just makes colors pop. It looks amazing. Game Room Solutions, it's kind of a matte. They do a matte vinyl. And the best thing is that there is no line across here. This is awesome. Now, I have this thing where I don't really like to duplicate artwork. It's kind of like a, if you need it, I could do it, that's fine. This customer saw a time crisis, like Vic, I want time crisis. I said, okay, cool, I'll do it, but if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a day and let me just add a little bit to it so it could be a little bit different. And sure enough, the customer was like, try it, boom, we came up with this. Awesome, left side, the red is my original OG time crisis. Basically, the biggest thing, I also added the second guy from Time Crisis 2. The Time Crisis logo clean here, and the biggest thing is on the side here, the Namco logo. Um, I'm gonna show off the artwork, so I'd rather be safe. Let me turn off the PC, and uh, we can start moving this cabinet around a little bit. So now again, this is on wheels. That's the one thing, the only thing about these shooter cabinets or even Guitar Hero cabinets, you're gonna have cords and wires. I will be very careful not to roll them over. But yes, my cabinet is on wheels. I love the levitating look that's because of the wheels it is up but it also gives me the opportunity to add leds to it man look at this i'm i don't know 511 beautiful beautiful that was another thing also i think the customer told me that he had like a not, he doesn't have a low ceiling uh but i always say what's like your limit this is awesome awesome going back to like in the beginning of the video like i said when i made the design of this my by vic cabinet the rear is really like this thick and I can't do that because I feel like it was gonna tilt back. So you can see I made this panel thicker, perfect placement and opportunity for the original Namco logo. Um, it's just, it's beautiful, man. I, 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 this is what, this is the red it was intended to be. It is a beautiful thing. Time crisis, high resolution here. Only thing granted, yes, you have the three characters here. It is the highest res that I could get. But I'm not gonna say it's pixelated, it's just that's how old the game is and you can't, you know, some people think I sit and I draw new characters. I'm like, no, if you need me or something like that, I have to get an artist involved, I'll do that. It's an extra fee. But yes, this right here though, the best thing is the, is the red. 
this is what it was meant to look like. So the original one, you had basically just the red dude and this dude, I added the blue dude on this and I just love it. Look at the lineup on the time cards. It's awesome. Take it to the other side for the blue. Like I said I have my little extension cord. Look at that. Again, on wheels. Look at this, beautiful. You'll never, you'll never move it, but in case you have to move it, it's on wheels. Beautiful. Look at the blue side on this. So the blue side, it took a different approach. I said, let's go the extra step. We have time crisis one and two on it. Let me make sure you can see it. <laughs> All right, good, you can see it. Basically, I kept one and two on the other side, and then on this side here, we went with three, four, and raising storm. I could be wrong. It could also be time crisis five. I don't, oh, right here. The, the, the whole crew is here. <laughs> and the big, the biggest thing that like, you know, I, I, I didn't want to do Time Crisis, the main logo, too many times. So I did add the Time Crisis, Crisis Zone. Crisis Zone is a beautiful game. I enjoy the hell out of Crisis Zone. It's just, especially because I had the original cabinet, I think the fucking tank, and then the Uzi on it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And to finalize it, you got the newer Bandai Namco logo here. You, I can't do much here. There's not much to do here. I couldn't really put an extra character. It'd be kind of just random. Um, so I went with this. I think the logos and it's just a tribute to Namco and their most iconic game out. That now brings us to the front of the cabinet. Again, as you can see, beautiful with the wheels. Love it, love it all. The front of the cabinet. So yes, really the only kind of thing that was kept from the original artwork was the kick plate with a little caveat. This is so funny. From Game Room Solutions, a lot of people would complain about the Time Crisis 4 logo PNG was pixelated. That's because you got the Game Room Solutions version. <laughs> I'll bring you in close. There's no pixelation on this Time Crisis 4 logo. Beautiful. When it came to the gun panel now, this is a big panel. And I just had to like kind of bring it back and I'm like, let me think of something that I could do. I always like this, the customer liked this whole like game screen, the game info thing that I have. People go crazy for that, it's great. It's also like kind of a good segue from the kick plate and up. This right here is two separate pieces of vinyl. You could technically see the line here. I had to purposely do that. Normally in my builds I like to do it as one solid vinyl piece, but in the event that I have to take this apart, I could do it without messing up vinyl and such. This right here, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Especially the player one, the player two piece of shard glass. It's just, it looks great. I think it looks awesome. It was a great touch. Um, you know, I didn't want to go like player one here. I wanted to do something unique. Uh, visually, you know, seeing the P, you know, player going here, but then reading it this way, it, I don't want to say the word weird, but that's the only way you can do it because I can't do player revert. It doesn't look right, but that was it. Then I had this big gaping hole. And I'm like, all right, you know, Time Crisis to me, when you think Time Crisis, you think this logo. That is the key logo that you think of. Um, I didn't want to just put Time Crisis on it. I then went, I mentioned it to in the overview. I go the extra step and, you know, I don't come up with random phrases. Wording here is actually seen somewhere either in game or on something. Basically what I'm getting at is that this set your sights on Time Crisis. I believe that was on the box art for Time Crisis 2 for the PS2. Same thing here with Together to Save the World, that's Time Crisis 2. This right here is my little kind of uh, hook for my TV mount, so that's not there normally, sorry. I'm not gonna redo the video, I'll just put this where it should be, right on the hook, boom, <laughs> cool. Now, the one thing when I was designing the cabinet, I said to myself, I like when I put a little quote here, I've done it on every build. The, 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 the kids place thing, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on it. <laughs> the pop, whatever it's called. I, wow, I'm drawing a blank on it. Um, kids bop, lollipop, there you go. <laughs> lollipop, my Scarface build. I always have something here. I knew I needed this here, but I also had to keep in mind the height of the TV. If I would have kept the original height, like my arcades, the TV would have been lower, and I think it would have been too low where you're pointing down at the screen. So I raised it up. It actually helped me. It was in my favor. I've done something that I've never done before. I'll talk about the audio amp. Before that, I love this. I think this right here is the best piece. 
Who do you target first when time is your biggest enemy? I love it. The top is bigger, you know, it's it's thicker font, bigger font than the bottom. It it's just beautiful, man. It it's a thing of beauty. And then another thing is that you could just see like the glass, the shards. It just lines up good. I I can't get enough of it. I love it. I love it. I'll take you in my hands real quick just to show you. Look at that. Look, look, look. 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 Look at the time crisis for. Yeah, that's clean. Yep. No pixels on that. <laughs> awesome. Now I have you here real quick. I'm going to talk about now the amp, the audio amp. Look at the placement of that. You can't even see that it's there. Beautiful, beautiful. Now also a quick funny note. Uh, I always do this. I've, I should have, I should say I've, I've always done this, especially when it comes to custom. I do still put gun holsters here. I do have the hole here but I still actually get the arcade gun holsters to actually hold the gun in place. Uh, I don't want guns getting scratched. That's just how I am. I didn't want to make the hole too tight where you're basically rubbing against this. There are two gun holsters that will, and they are keeping the gun up. Now, let's talk about the one thing. I even knew before, before I was building this cabin, I was like, the audio on this. I had to go big on the audio on this. I always get my Z533. Uh, it's a it's it's a nice system with nice a nice subwoofer to it. When I was making the artwork and the cabinet, I was like, where am I gonna put this puck? The Z533 has this big round puck for the audio volume. For arcade builds, I could hide it somewhere, but for this one, two things: I needed it like visible, and I needed it accessible. Um, my original idea was to put it here. Like I was gonna put this round puck here. This way, it's kind of easy. But then I'm like, man, that fucking kills the artwork. <laughs> Imagine just having a big puck here and it just, I was like, I can't, I cannot do that. Then I went and I put the puck up top behind the TV. There's actually a shelf up there. I know I think of everything. There's a nice little shelf there that's going to have his keyboard, his mouse, LED controller, and also the TV remote. I was going to put it up there, but then I'm like, what if a kid is playing this and needs to lower it? You got to get something accessible. This right here is the best thing I can find. This is a flush mount amp. The best thing though, and the most needed thing for this amp, I needed something to control sub, the sub woofer. So this amp I actually have on my House of Rock cabinet. It's got your volume. You could even adjust the um, stereo sound, treble and bass. And you could also do the sub woofer volume and frequency. I think the placement on this is perfect. You could barely see it. From where you are, you kind of just see five nubs, but from down here, it actually is labeled main volume, R and L channel, subwoofer, and it's got all the labels on it. I think it's genius. And uh, I'm very pleased and happy with the placement. I think it's a great place for an amp. Kids, they could just come here and just raise and lower the volume. I'm gonna have basically like red markings to show like this is, you know, where it should be. And, uh, you know, when I do deliver it, you know, we'll do a whole sound test and all of that. I'm going to show you now the rear of the cabinet. Excuse the wiring. I'm shooting this video that I'm going to clean up wiring and then get ready to deliver it. Um, wiring is wiring. <laughs> Everything here is clean, but basically I have like the power supplies for the actual guns kind of just thrown in. Again, I got to get this done. So real quick before we go, get to take a look at the front here. You might not see it in the video, but there's actually the speakers right here. I have the grills, I use the holes, I made the nice grill cut out here, speakers right behind this, and you do have your USB flush mount along with the 24 volt barrel flush mount. What a thing of beauty. It's beautiful. That's also another thing, Game Room Solutions, their, their thing is right in the middle. And I kind of do like that this is separated. Keeps the center clean, beautiful artwork clean, logos clean. If I had it in the middle, I, 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 would, I wouldn't be able to put time crisis. I would have to make everything smaller. It just, it came out great. I think it looks great. Now, taking a look at the rear. Yes, I do have a rear panel. It will go right here. You don't have to have it on. I'm gonna let the customer decide. You could put it on. I actually have at least my two vents here and then I have two big holes in the shelf up here so that air could just kind of travel out because heat rises. This air brings, uh, this fan brings air into the cabin and not out. It brings it in and then basically it rises on up. Again, I'll clean up wiring and stuff, but there's so much extra stuff going on. Uh, I actually modified the PC case. I put a hole in the base of it. I took 
a Molex connector from the actual PC power. That powers on the fans, and that also powers on the LEDs to the, um, to the buttons. This way you know that the computer is on. Again, you have your PC power button right here. Awesome, I just have to kind of clean it up. That's your basic wood dust. I'll bring you in close, what I want to show you. Again, there is a shelf here. So, keyboard, mouse, LED controller will go up here nice and neat. I'm gonna bring you in here to actually show you the subwoofer. Now real quick, I'll bring you in close. You can kind of see it right there. That is the subwoofer. That is a Z533 sub, modified, cut, and such, right into the cabinet. So basically, this right here is one big air panel. No, it's not gonna mess up hard drives. This is running an M.2 SSD, so nothing like spinning, physical spinning is not happening inside of here. Uh, it's just great. You got your power strip right here, LEDs, the whole nine, it's just very simple. Again, like I said, I do have to clean up the wiring here, but I'm gonna worry about that when I get to the guy's house. That I'm not too worried about right now. And yeah, that's the inside. Okay, and just having it on wheels is just a thing of beauty. I push the PC power button. Only big thing now, like these TVs now, they don't kind of automatically turn on. Then again, I didn't turn it on with the power. It's actually very funny, the PC will power on before the TV turns on. <laughs> again, while the, the cabinet is on, the TV goes into like sleep. But if you totally power down the cabinet, obviously the TV doesn't, it's not sleeping anymore, it's actually powered down. It's actually very funny, right when like the TV's about to start or turn on like this, uh, you actually hear the audio of hyperspin launch. Um, that's just how TVs are. You can't really do anything about it. I even tried to put it in like store mode, but then it started giving like the advertisements. And yeah, also another cool thing, the customer could use this TV for anything. He could also use the PC for anything. If you wanted to go online and stuff like that, you could do that. The TV, you wanna put Netflix on it, cool. You just gotta, you know, do the Wi-Fi and connect and boom. There you go. Again, just like. It, it, that's not even like half. <laughs> it is loud. And again, Z533 speakers. I decase them, I pop them open. They're great speakers. Like I said, the only downside is that that puck, I couldn't put that puck anywhere. You gotta make it like, I wanna make it look clean. But again, 4K, it's, it's awesome, awesome. I feel like I went over everything that I wanted to do and just, you know, talk about in this. Uh, again, just another amazing, amazing thing. Some games that you can see here, I have two House of Dead remakes. I always have to keep the original game. I have the same thing for Blue Estate. I have the original Blue Estate and then I have the two player mod. So for example, this is the original House of Dead remake and then there's the arcade mod that they came out with. It's just, it's a thing of beauty, man. Look at that, the loading screens. I always like to give my little custom touch to it. It's, it's beautiful, man. And the biggest thing that I'm, I'm I gotta get it there. Um, it's just, I'm happy that I'm able to give somebody a great Christmas present. It's actually very funny, the customer is very cool. The 32 inch cabinet that we did was a Pandora box build. It was actually for the wife. The wife is the gamer. Awesome, I was like, I met her, she was all ecstatic. I feel like he's buying this for her. But it's just insane. It's a thing of beauty. The house of the dead. It's, it's unbelievable, man. And those guns. That was the one thing the customer was like, Vic, is it worth the price for the guns? I said, listen, you're gonna play this every day. You need these guns. These guns right here, you, you just need them. The clack, the 24 volt clack, clack, clack. Again, two players. I could press start, but I'm over here. <laughs> Light them up, Vic. Look at that. Reload all screen. No. Oh, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> you need more shots. Look at that. 4K Beauty House of the Dead remake. Vic, man, it's a time crisis cabinet. Why do you keep playing House of the Dead? I love House of the Dead. We used to have one. Man, what a thing of beauty. Uh, I was mentioning Crisis Zone. Beautiful stuff. No, actually, you know what we'll do to end the video? I will run Time Crisis 2, PS2. I had somebody, E-Rock, come over to my house along with a buddy named John. He came over and I was showing them PS2 split screen on a 55 inch TV is a game changer. It is a thing of beauty.
Time crash too. I'm gonna just say her name to turn off the lights. Turn off the garage lights. We'll run th the music on this. You can't. When you think time crisis? Ah. Oh. Again, now check this out. 55 inch split. It is beautiful. It is unbelievable. Now it's great. Again, even with me, I could dual wheel these. And I have basically my pedal on the gun. This is split screen right here. Let's go. Light him up. Nice. Ah. Ah. Beautiful. Awesome. And yes, they do work separately. Also, it's just in the dark. It glows. If this is going to actually go against the wall, it will glow. The LEDs don't interact or interfere with gun for IR. What a thing. The bat, look at this. Look at this. Let me get a ruler. This is what split screen. Now, granted, though, there's only a handful of games that are split screen. There's this game, and I believe it's just Time Crisis 3 uh, that is split screen. I might be wrong. There might be one more, but those are the two I can think of. This is, this is why I love a 55 inch screen. Not to mention again, it's like the height of where that bad guy is, is kind of like really where a bad guy would be. Especially like, for example, when I was playing House of the Dead, that zombie, I'm right here. It's like I'm actually shooting a real zombie as far as height, that's what I'm talking about. RK one up made that time crisis, you're shooting down at the floor, stupid. <laughs> Press the button to exit, full screen videos. It's a thing of beauty, man. There you guys have it, the Time Crisis 55 inch by Vic dedicated shooter cabinet is ready to be wrapped and delivered. Man, look at that 55 inch screen, man. It is, it's a thing of beauty. Wow, this was it. This was the main build I needed to do before Christmas. And uh, I am right now, it is a week before Christmas. So that's great. Coming up though, I do have six Game Room Solutions two-player panels. We'll talk about that. Yes, Game Room Solutions is there. If you need a cheaper option, I will offer Game Room Solutions. Um, yes, awesome. Uh, the last little final bit I'm going to end this video with because I know the videos go out. It's on every build. Videos go out. People are like, Vic, how much, how much, how much? Okay. I don't like to say pricing on you. I don't like to just say pricing because people will hold me to it. If you think that this is a $2,000 build, no. If you think this is a $4,000 build, no. If you think it's a $6,000 build, no. You're close, but no. You need to realize, please, this is the number one thing because people, their eyes go like this when I write the price because they see this. You're getting what you pay for. If you cannot recognize that these guns, the guns alone, are almost $2,000, we can't talk. If you cannot realize that, we can't talk. That's the number one thing. Vic see, uh, people see the videos. Vic, man, I saw that time crisis build. I need that gun. How much? Oh, I thought it was like a $2,000 build. No, that doesn't even cover the guns. Or I should say it covers the guns, but nothing else. Like, please. Again, I don't want to... I don't want to sound mean, negative. Uh, it's just that's that's what it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you do, that, that's where I was getting at. If you need a cheaper option, there are other options. We could do a non-sliding recoil gun. You could do a cheaper gun. We could do a cheaper PC, basically bringing it down to a Dell Optiplex, but you can't play certain games. Or we could get a different cabinet, which is Game Room Solutions. No, you can't put a 55 inch on a game of solutions. Maybe in six, seven years, they make a 55 inch, whatever, but no. Uh, that's the big thing. Again, the wood, I cut the wood, I laid the vinyl, I made the artwork. This right here is a fully custom build, one of infinity. Vic VP, game case arcades. I love what I do. I love it. Let's get it home.